Welcome. The object of this video is the operation and use of silicon photodiodes and basic simple circuits. I'm your host Lewis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. The focus here will be using photodiodes in conjunction with transistors to make high-speed switches. If you take a photodiode and put it on a um, voltmeter, it will check the same as any other diode. It has an anode, has a cathode, it only conducts in one direction and has a voltage drop of about a half a volt. Otherwise, you can take the PN junction of a photodiode and shine a light on it, such as from, be it a LED or even daylight, it will produce a small output voltage like a miniature solar cell. Uh, it will output a little under a half a volt. This we're not too concerned with here. That's for uh, some other videos when we ha will make use of that property. Here we will make use of it in its reverse bias mode. Let's take a look here. This, uh, again, a photodiode is a PN junction. The PN junction, this is a diode, it is reverse biased. Cathode to positive, anode to negative. This creates, of course, like all diodes, a depletion region. When light is introduced into that depletion region, we get a leakage current proportional to light intensity. Looking at the chart down here, we've always got a little bit of leakage current even at no light level. But as the light level increases, our leakage current increases flowing from negative to positive here. Remember, this is a reverse leakage current. Here's an illustration of the actual silicon construction of a photodiode. It consists largely of a bulk n-type silicon and it has a very thin p-type silicon or anode where the light will pass through the anode to the depletion region. As light enters the depletion region we're going to get a small leakage current from uh, negative to positive. Remember the negative would be connected to the positive in this case and the anode would be connected to the negative th thus reverse biasing the uh, diode and creating a depletion region. The size of this depletion region depends entirely on the reverse voltage applied. If I have a higher reverse voltage, I will have a larger depletion region. Here are some illustrations of some photodiodes in their various packages. Let's note that the surface area, the larger the surface area, the more sensitive to light it becomes. But the frequency response gets slower. So we're going to discuss next how we're going to do a compromise between switching speed versus um, sensitivity. All right, this is a very simple circuit. I wired this up and it works. Basically, I close the switch, my UV LED will light up. Here I have a photodiode D1. I have the cathode connected to plus 12 volts and the anode goes to the base of an NPN transistor. What happens is when light falls on the photodiode from the LED I suddenly get a leakage current that switches on Q1 and lights up the LED in the collector circuit. That's basically it. A uh, very simple circuit. If I was to use a higher gain transistor, I would, um, it would just be more sensitive. In this configuration, the 2N2222 doesn't detect 
the normal dark current if I would put a Darlington in there it would it would be impo nearly impossible to shut this LED off because it would be amplifying even the minuscule dark current let's run back to what we talked about earlier let's drop back a few slides remember I said that if we increase the reverse voltage on the diode we would grow the size of the depletion region you notice that I have 12 volts reverse volt, uh, voltage on the diode so I should have a sizable depletion region that also makes it it seems a little more sensitive and you would get more current flow but there's more to it than that anytime you have a reverse biased PN junction here is your depletion region you still have a P type conductor and an N type conductor they're both conductors and they're separated by what is now an insulator this forms a capacitor two conductive plates with an insulator in between if I have a large reverse bias voltage assuming I don't exceed the breakdown voltage and it shorts out I have the plates are wider apart and I have less capacitance but if I use a low reverse bias the plates will be closer together and they will have more capacitance so going back to here assuming I could turn my switch on and off super fast let's say I instead I connected it to a square wave generator and I was going to use an oscilloscope on the output to measure the frequency response I would get a better higher frequency response at 12 volts than I would at 5 volts just because the plate the, the, the conductive cathode and anode are further apart this works to a point but we can do better than this now we come to something called a pin photodiode this is somewhat different than our normal PN junction diode in this case we have what is called an intrinsic region that is an area of the silicon that is lightly or non doped at all it's just silicon no charge or hole carriers and we have a further separation of the N and P junctions when we reverse bias this we do form our non-conductive depletion region but because of this intrinsic region between them the P and N type plates are further apart thus we have greatly reduced the capacitance when we reduce the capacitance we increase the frequency response this is an integrate this is an optocoupler called known as the 6N135 and 6N136 they can be 8 pin dips or surface mount here we have an infrared photo emitter and now we have a pin photodiode that feeds right into a base of an NPN transistor if you go right back to here it's this circuit minus the 470 ohm in the LED um, this is a this is for high speed photo detecting like maybe you're trying to de uh, detect the rotation of a high speed motor shaft or something of that type you want good clean square wave frequency response this is how you would hook it up for instance in a test circuit in this case we have connected um, the photodiode it's reversed it's a pin diode again with an intrinsic region and we have connected a pull up resistor to the transistor collector this is a test circuit and they tested it you're talking about a hundred microsecond pulse with a 10 percent duty cycle and on the output V out 
um, which they estimate would be, I don't know, the tr capacitance of the transistor or whatever. This is what you're dealing with. You've got a square wave going into the LED. The response of the tr a phototransistor and photo, I mean the transistor photodiode combination is that it will switch, it takes a slight delay to switch completely off and then when it, uh, the LED goes off there's a slight delay in switching on again. The higher the capacitance the worse this problem is. So by using a reverse bias pin photodiode in conjunction with a transistor we can produce at a high frequency a fairly good response time. This is another unit. This is the Avego AFCL 5211T. It's a dual unit. Does the same thing as our 6N135 does. But it's two units in the same package. Like I said, you would use these for high speed uh, detecting high speed sensors and so forth. This gives you better frequency response uh, assuming that you have a com microcontroller that can handle it and many of them can. So that's a basic introduction to photodiodes connected to transistors. In a separate video we're going to be connecting photodiodes to op amps and in this and this time instead of pulse detection we're going which you can do with those if you really want to we're more interested in detecting a voltage level so please visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com thanks for viewing